Uh, thank you so much, uh, Joseph, for reminding me to start recording. But you should have actually, uh, you should have just unmuted your microphone for something this important. Please just unmute your microphone and tell me that I haven't uh, started recording. Okay, so we're saying the proverb is meant to share something, uh, you know, in a literal manner when it's actually meant to be understood at a different level, at a higher level. Okay, so there is a higher level kind of interpretation that, that we employ in, you know, in understanding the proverb. Uh, I'll give you an example of a proverb. Of course, these proverbs comes in very, you know, come in various uh, uh, forms, but uh, we we'll just deal with very few. So for instance, we have a proverb that says, mutu kuru siure wankonya, okay? Mutu kuru siure wankonya, meaning a big head cannot avoid blows. Now, uh, if you think of it literally, okay, someone has a very big head like this and they're fighting with you when you throw, you know, a punch, okay? Even if they were to move away, you will still, you know, meet your target because it's too big. Yes, that is true. It makes a lot of sense, but is that what it really means? Definitely not. It means a lot more, okay? It basically means on average, uh, a person, for instance, in, you know, with a leadership position cannot avoid criticism. So if you're a leader, you are bound to be criticized and you cannot run away from that criticism. So you should just accept the criticism because it will always happen. And people will say, no matter what good you, know, uh, you do, people will always find something wrong with you. People will always criticize you. They'll always you know, say you are doing something wrong. This is how it happens. So we'll always be blamed for things that sometimes we're not even supposed to be blamed for because of our position in society. So proverb, that proverb basically says a lot more. And I know every one of you has a proverb and what we're going to do right now is that we are all going to unmute our microphones. Everyone unmute your microphones. Unmute your microphones, everyone. Okay, good, yeah. All right, our microphones are needed uh, because I just want us to talk and we'll start with Enoch Chanda, you're on top of the list. Give us a proverb that you know, not which is one, our own proverb. I know members don't have proverbs. So Chanda, you don't have proverbs, you follow from Eastern province. Any proverb, 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 any can you explain what it says? Can you explain what it says? It's like uh, something has been stolen. Okay, all right, I think okay. we have right. to mute themselves, then we'll mute themselves, then we'll get one by one. Mute themselves, then we'll get one by one. Okay. You out, then you okay. okay, everyone can mute, then we remain with uh, uh, Rachanda. So Enoch, uh, you can go ahead and uh, say the proverb again, then you uh, give us the interpretation. Ah, no, no, let's do it differently. So uh, Enoch will give us the proverb and it will be explained by a different person. So please give us that proverb again, then someone else will you know, we'll explain it. <laughs> okay, that's great. Now, uh, Sarah Walia, you left. You are there for going to explain it. Now, in explaining, you are going to explain it at two levels. The first is the literal 
translation, what does it say? So you could say something like, no, it says that the day an old woman died, a hyena, uh, you know, passed uh, gray hair in its stool. Okay, you can explain that. Then from there I say, but then the next thing will be, okay, but what does it really talk about? Then you give us the interpretation now. So the first is the literal translation. The next is the interpretation. Sarah. Mr. Enoch, could you repeat the proverb again? I think I didn't get it right. <laughs> Hmm, so I do not understand. Yes, it's clear. I do not understand that proverb, but it's uh, <laughs> that one is difficult, and I've never even heard of it. Okay, any other person who can explain that? Please raise your hand. That's a straightforward. Uh, uh, yes, Judy. Let me try that. Okay, go ahead. At, uh, although I've just joined anyway, you have just joined the, uh, uh, at the time when uh, you just mentioned this proverb. You said, <laughs> Yes, is it so? Yes. Hello. Yes, yes, uh, yes it yes. means that it simply means that when uh, that old person has died, and then the hyena uh, in the hyena's uh, thing, you find the, the white hair. It means that uh, that same hyena, it is the one that has actually eaten up the, the old person. Okay, okay, that's good. Now, what really is it meant to teach? Because, you know, these proverbs are meant to teach something. Grace, you can please help us there. Uh, good afternoon. Sorry, I just want to talk about the interpretation of that uh, proverb. Uh, it means that the day the old woman or the old person has died, uh, like the entire village will know about that funeral, you know, everyone will be involved and things like that. So that's what it means. I think it uh, means that like everyone will know about that funeral, like it will be a big thing. Okay, that's the interpretation. Say the day uh, the old person dies, then everyone will hear of the funeral. Do we have any other additions to that? Uh, let me try also. Uh, uh, this prophet simply means that we cannot do away with uh, old people. We need them in our society for wisdom and knowledge. Okay, so Vestina says that we can't do without old people. We need them uh, every day in our lives. Okay, that's what the proverb is talking about. Any other person to contribute? Can I try again? Please go ahead, Yuri. Yeah, uh, another interpretation of this proverb is that uh, when something happens, let's say uh, a person dies in a community, and then uh, the, after that person has died, then someone else uh, goes over to the end of the It means that that person is the one who has actually killed uh, the other person who has died. Can you please say that again? I didn't get it clearly. I'm saying, uh, Someone dies in a community. Are you getting me? Am I clear? Someone dies in a community and then yes, upon the death God. of that person, 
upon the death of that person, someone else again disappears. Then that person who has just disappeared, instead of attending that funeral, it, uh, it means that that person is a suspect to the death of uh, the, the victim who has died. Okay, okay, that's quite clear. Say that uh, if someone dies or someone is killed, then another person, you know, dis uh, disappears, then it means that they are a suspect because the question is why are they disappeared? Okay, yes, Annie. Uh, just in line with what Julie said, I think it means uh, it's been easy to identify a wrongdoer. So when there is something that is missing per se, and you find this one person who is always around in the house has suddenly gone missing. So you end up suspecting to say, uh, we've lost money and all of a sudden, uh, Mary is not in the house. She's gone shopping and she, she never has money. So where has she got the money from? So, okay, that's uh, quite interesting. So I think there are, all these interpretations that we get whenever we interact with a, with a proverb, okay? So proverbs always give us, you know, uh, something to talk about all the time. Uh, this time I'll ask, let me see, you know, Kenny, Grace, Bestina, Julie, Joseph, Joseph Tembo, uh, give us a proverb, Joseph. Joseph, uh, yes, go ahead, Joseph. Okay, so Joseph, uh, proverb is Mazakataika Sayoreka. Who can help us uh, firstly translate that literally and then uh, later give it an interpretation? Please raise your hand. Yes, Grace, you may go ahead. So I'll give the, the, the literal translation would be when water is spilled down, you can't pick it up. And for the interpretation, it would be more to real life situation, like when trust is lost, it can never be regained or any other things. Okay, okay, that's true. Any other comments on that, interpretations? Okay, let me see, there's Bridget and it's only Bridget. Okay, yes, Bridget, go ahead. Bridget Ndimandima. Please unmute yourself and give us the interpretation, including a literal translation of the same. Are you getting me? Yes, we, Hello? Can, we can get you now. Please go ahead. Thank, thank you. Uh, it simply means that when some things happen, you cannot replace them. We just have to look for solutions over some things which may happen. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Bridget. Any other person who wants to say something about that proverb? Mazakataika Sayolek. Any other person? Um, uh, basically, the whole point is all about care. That uh, if you don't take care of yourself, for instance, and when you die, that will be the end. If you don't do certain things accordingly, once it is discovered, you'll be fired and you lose your job. So care is very, very important. Okay, thank you very much, Enoch. Anyone else? Sarah, Sarah Walia. Um, I would like you. Yes. Yes, Sarah, say something. No, no, I thought you wanted me to say, you can say what you want to say, sir. No, 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 you were the next on my list, so you were next to say something uh, uh, there. So it's either, for now, it's either you're commenting, 
you are commenting on this riddle, I mean, on this proverb, or you are giving us a proverb? I'm giving you a proverb. Great, please go ahead. Okay. Um, Mwana Shenda, Atasha Nina Ukunaya. Okay, thank you very much. Now, you people are giving common riddles. Eh? I mean, proverbs, proverbs that I also know as a non member, surely. That's the problem. Members don't have read, uh, proverbs. Okay, so who can explain that proverb? Umana Shenda Tasha Yinokunaya. Please raise your hand when you can. All right, so we have Bridget right, and so Grace. Bridget, and Bridget, then Grace will follow. Hello. Yes, Bridget, go ahead. Yes, Mwana Shenda Tasha Ninokuri what it simply means is that if you don't visit some other people, you may not understand the important things. But if you visit some other places, some other tribes, that's when you understand how people live. If you don't do that, you may seem like where you are staying, you are the best out of everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Bridget. Next, we have Grace. Please uh, talk about uh, the proverb. Yeah, it just means that you might think that your mom is the best cook. Uh, unless you visit other people, other places, that's when you realize that actually your mom wasn't the best cook. So that's what it means, basically. It just means that when you are in your, in your setting, you might think you are the best, you have the best, but not until you visit other places, that's when you realize that, oh, actually, uh, people live better than we do. Okay, so, you know, most of the times we really think we know everything, we think we are the best, we think there's all that. Actually, there's a lot of information that we don't have. Remember what I said about literature. I said literature helps us interact with the world in a different manner. It still comes back to the same thing. So we can see here literature itself telling us that the world is not limited to our view. There, is, there are so many facets to it. It's much broader than we think ourselves. And that is uh, what the proverb does in this particular case, this particular proverb. It tells us the world is not as you view it. There are so many other things about it. It's far more complex than you think. It's much bigger than you think. Uh, it, you know, it's somehow uh, discouraging this idea of uh, easily thinking that you have arrived, okay? You are exposed to something and you think that that is it, then you take it to be gospel truth, no. So somehow one thing that we could, we could be thinking about is that we probably shouldn't think that there's such a thing as gospel truth. Even just the belief ourselves, the believing you think you're a very good person, not knowing that to some people do enjoy, you know, there is all that. So we need to be open, you know, to all those realities. Uh, this time we're going to move to the riddle. Okay, uh, we'll talk about the riddle. Now, what about the riddle? Okay, Wilson Banda wants to say something. Okay, Wilson, please, I'll give you this opportunity. You'll be the last one to speak uh, as we move to the riddle. Wilson. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, it, it's a proverb. I wanted to say it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, Wilson, why are you going for member proverbs? Eh? You don't know that members are insane. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying yeah. to, to help them. <laughs> These guys are insane. <laughs> okay, Julie, raise the hand. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say it, Julie. Please say something. Is it a proverb? You can give us a proverb, or if uh, you would like to explain what uh, Wilson just shared. I'm sorry about that, Julie. I, I don't know how I missed it. Please, Julie, go ahead. Uh no, I actually, I just wanted to comment on the previous uh, uh, proverb. You can still do so. Yeah, my, yes, I was saying um, my contribution is that that proverb, it simply means that uh, it, it, it's all about exposure. It's about exposure. You need to be exposed to know uh, a lot of things because the world is dynamic. Because you can't just be comfortable at a place where you are 
and then think, oh, is well, oh, what I have is okay. Meanwhile, there are other things out there that we need to be exposed to. Thank you. Okay, that's very true. Uh, Bridget and Grace, your hands are up. I don't know if you have raised them just now or you didn't put them down after talking. Uh, but then we had, uh, no, I, I can't remember. Bimba's are very terrible. Sorry, I just did put my time down. Oh. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. I I can say uh, yes, please say it again. Okay, great. Uh, who can say something about that before we turn to the proverb that has been shared by Proud? Someone to comment on uh, that, please raise your hand. Okay, it seems no one is ready to talk about it. They are scared. It's embarrassing. Okay, get, Wilson, can you please uh, just explain the you know the proverb to us? Yeah, what Bembas told me uh, is that it it simply means anger can never solve a, a problem. Yes. Okay. When okay. You are angry. You cannot solve a problem. Ah, that's that's interesting. Okay, I don't like it to elicit uh, responses from others. Okay, then now there's a proverb from Proud which says, Anadia Takora Galu. Who can uh, explain that or who can interpret it? Uh, literal translation and interpretation. Anadia Takora Galu. Anyone who is ready to take that on? Okay, Proud says he cannot call because of network challenges. So Proud, can you just write that down in there? So just write there. So as, as we move to the riddle, we'll be able to read what you're going to say. And uh, now I was talking about the riddle to say the riddle is a statement. You know, it's just like the proverb. So the riddle is a statement, but then it requires a response. It does not just end in itself. And it's clever, it's quite witty. So when it is said, you have to think, what is it referring to? So when it is said, it refers to something in the world, but not what has been said. So it has a literal image. Clearly you can see it, but then you realize that it is referring to something different from that, not really uh, what it is. Uh, I'll give you an example. And I know uh, everyone here understands Tumbuka and you'll be able to answer when I ask you this, okay? So the example i'll give you you have to give me an answer to say what it corresponds to so the first one i'll give you is uh tikumani what is the answer please raise your hand when you know it zingirirauku tikumani yes grace hello sir yes grace it means meet me halfway. Okay, not entirely true. True. Is another Bridget wants to say another Bridget. Oh, no, no. Uh, okay, yes, after Bridget, we'll get to Douglas. Bridget? Bridget, are you able to unmute yourself? It means past the other side we meet. Now remember, this is a riddle we're talking about. It's a question. You have to find an answer. Okay, let's try Douglas. Hello, sir. Are you able to get me? Yes, Douglas, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, the answer is uh, belt. That's correct. Can you explain? Okay. Uh, that riddle 
uh, it requires somebody to think that uh, what can go around so that it, it meets. Uh, so the belt, when it goes to the other side, then it meets at the center with the, with the other part. Yeah. That's correct. So the answer is belt to that riddle. And in Tumbuka, we say bande. Uh, the next riddle that's coming from me is, which it's also very straightforward, and I know you'll get it right. It's nyumba ya kuitu irijemkomo. Who can answer that? Hands up, please. Nyumba ya kuitu irijemkomo. Mpaso. It's an egg. Okay, how is it an egg? Um, how can I put it? Uh, so because like, uh, how can I explain it? I'm not sure how to explain it, but all I know is that the answer okay. is an egg. Vestina and Grace also have their hands up. Can we start with Vestina? How is it an is it really an egg, Vestina? And if it is, how is it an egg? I also like it's, it's an egg. An egg has got no opening, has got no door. Okay, Grace, are you trying to say the same thing as well? Yes, yes, there's no door. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I shared this riddle when I was performing before you tourists who came to Zambia. I said it in English. I said our house has no door. And it was very difficult for them to find the answer. They never did until I realized that actually my translation was terrible. So we do not say our house has no door. We say in English, we say our house has no entrance. Okay, because the door is that actual object that closes. Okay, it closes the entrance. So when you say door, the answer they gave me was cave. And I said it wasn't correct. Then I realized that actually I hadn't asked the question correctly. So that's the other thing you have to take into account as you, you know, as you translate or interpret these. You, have, you need to take all that into account. Okay, now we can get people to ask readers. Uh, who has a riddle? And you ask a riddle, the next person will give you the answer. Who goes first? Please raise your hand. Vestina, your hand is up. I don't know if you are asking a riddle or you have a question. Please, Vestina. No, it was up to back when, before you were pointed. <laughs> I don't have anything right now. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, may I ask something, sir? Yes, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding it, I've always found it a, a problem to differentiate, especially remember between riddles and proverbs. Because some riddles may come out as proverbs. I don't know what is your comment. All right, a riddle basically requires an answer, a straight answer. So, for instance, you say, uh, you know, yes, uh, a riddle requires an answer, a direct referent in the world. Why well, a proverb is basically a teaching, okay? A proverb is a teaching, the statement is made, then you learn something from it, say, oh, this tells us this. But when you ask a riddle, for instance, you say, uh, wherever I'm going, people are clapping for me. Then you have to start searching the world. So you say, the world. So you say what is this talking about? What is it referring to in the world? They say, oh, it could be flip-flops because they behave in this particular manner. So that's how it works. So a riddle is a statement that has this, uh, answer and almost all the time there's only one answer in the world okay vestina your hand is up would you like to say something you've 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 taken my my reader that's what i wanted to say oh which one did I'm you want asking, to say? people are clapping for me <laughs> 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 i see okay okay all right, so our time is Can up. Can I say something? No, let, let, uh, up. yes, you will come in when we 
uh, login again. So for now we can okay. try it. Yes, yes. So you will be the first one. Oh, okay. Yes, Sarah. Jesus. 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 Jesus.